Welcome to Bread of Life Ministries podcast. Our mission is to share the love of Christ. We pray you will be blessed by this message. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you extend a love fellowship to the two or three people around you? Just bless them, speak something good to them, encourage somebody. It is great to serve the Lord with you. It is wonderful to have you in the house of the Lord. Oh, I see the glory of God upon you. I see his goodness in you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Yeshua. Oh, what a presence. I feel the presence of God in this house today. Hallelujah. Indeed, I am with us. Hallelujah. Indeed, the I am is with us. And we want to praise him. We want to thank him. We want to honor him. We want to honor him. In your own words, will you honor the Lord? In your own words. So if I be a father, where is my honor? Where is my honor? Beloved, when we talk of honor, we are not talking of bringing money or offering. But with your praise, you can honor God. With your worship, you can honor God. In fact, those are the things that he will not despise. He will not turn down on. With your heart, you can honor the Lord. Beloved, if you are in his presence, you must as well surrender unto him and give him the honor due him. For he is the possessor of the heaven and the earth, the giver of life, the bread of life, the one who satisfies unto glad. Who would have thought that you come this far? But John the Revelator said, Behold, I looked and I saw a door open in the heaven. He is the one who creates opportunities. He is the God who gives access. He is the God who favors our going out and our coming in. He is the I am who sustains and provides for us. Where is his honor? Where is his honor? Will you lift up your voice and say, Father, everything that I am everything that I will ever be I surrender at your feet and your honor your glory your worship I will give to no other but the honor is yours I bring you all the honor I surrender unto you all the honor You are a good father. Oh, yes. The Lord is reaching out to somebody right now. He is a good father. He will not leave you abandoned. He never abandons his children. May you feel his love. May you know his love, the love of the father, the one who has loved you with everlasting love. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Oh, Father, touch your people. Oh, turn hearts unto yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kapayakata. Oh, let the disappointed find a new appointment. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the discouraged find a new encouragement. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the hopeless find a new hope in you. Let the hopeless 
finding new hope in you. Let the hopeless find a new hope in you. Father, let the hopeless find a new hope in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. May you never miss this glory hope that we have in Christ. Thank you, Father. Lift your eyes unto Jesus. The possessor of the heaven and the earth. The lion and the lamb. The one who stretched forth the heavens like a curtain. The one who sits enthroned in heaven. And the earth is his footstool. Can you imagine the magnitude? The greatness of your God. Beloved, in his light, we shall see light. And in his greatness, we shall be great. He said in his word, the feeble among you shall be like David. The feeble, the weakling, the ones who have not done so well will be like David. And beloved, you know the accomplishment of David. And if the wriggling among us will be like David, I can guarantee you your tomorrow is greater. Come on, Nebros. And one of you shall be a thousand and few of you a multitude. Beloved, Jacob said, I cross this river with one staff. I came to the other side of life with nothing but a staff. But now the Lord has turned me into a multitude. May the Lord turn you into a multitude. Oh, you did not hear me. May the Lord turn you into a multitude. May the Lord turn you into a multitude. Man nebros kapapa. In the name of Yeshua. Somebody give the Lord a praise. God does not make haphazard things. Amen. Everything he makes is to fulfill purpose and destiny. If man can design machines to fulfill purpose and to work according to the intent of the designer's mind, how much more you and me created in his image that he has made us to fulfill destiny, purpose, and assignment, whichever way you prefer. Amen. So the assignment on your life cannot fail. Beloved, God will not leave you like that. He knows what he has designed you for and you fit your purpose. If you believe it, shout amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We want to talk about an invitation. We are still dealing with the power of invitation. Hallelujah. And I've said several times in this service for the past three Sundays or three weeks that in life your level of rich is determined by the invitation you honor. Hallelujah. We want to talk about one invitation. Hallelujah. In the gospel of Luke chapter number one, we want to talk about this invitation. Hallelujah. How this invitation change our
perspective changed our world, how this invitation brought us hope, how this invitation brought us joy, how this invitation has brought us to the realm in which we are, how the invitation opened doors for us. By one person's obedience, hallelujah, and honoring the invitation upon her life, me and you today have received life and life eternal. If you believe it, shout amen. So if you've got your Bibles with you, I want you to come with me to Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter number one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter number one, reading from verse number 26, speaking from the Amplified Version. Hallelujah. We have learned from the course of the previous weeks how a great man invited people for great dinner, praise God. And among the people he invited, he also on the day that the dinner was scheduled, the dinner was ready, he sent a reminder in the form of his servant to this people and said, hey, my master had made the dinner ready. Everything is ready. You don't need to come and, and cook. You don't need to bring your drink with you. You don't need to bring and share. He's a great man. He's made provision. He has everything in check. Drink yourself and eat as much as you can eat. Drink as much as you can drink. Be joyful. Enjoy yourself for he has the capacity to do that. But we were told from the Holy Scriptures that the first one had the opportunity to receive eternal life, but turned down the invitation. Hallelujah. He said, I have bought a land and I need to go and see it at, mid, at night. Hallelujah. Dinner does not happen in the daytime. Dinner is always at night. Hallelujah. The other one is their family excuse. I have just married a wife. I have just married a husband. I have just had a baby boy. I have just had a baby girl. I have just delivered a new baby. I cannot come. Amen. But the Bible says that their excuses did not stop this great man. The dinner had been prepared and his house must be full. Hallelujah. So he sent his servant and said, Go gather people from the wayside, the byside, whoever you can get, bring them in. For our master is not a useless investor. I always say this. He is not a useless investor. If your capacity is this bow, and he fills you to the brim, he will not keep failing you to waste. Amen. Amen. He will not keep failing you to waste. That is a useless investor. No investor will put their money where it is going down the drain. No investor will do that. And our God is not a useless investor. So if your capacity is this bowl and you are filled to the brim, it stops just like the oil. If you want more, you do what? You increase your capacity. Amen. If you want more, you increase your capacity. So he said, I mean, my, uh, the dinner is already prepared. The food is in abundance. Drink is in abundance. I cannot wait for this to be wasted. So go the highways, everywhere where you can get people. Bring them in. That all their preparation will not go to waste. That is just for a recap so that those who are here for first time when we talk in Luke, you follow with us. Praise God. So let, let us go into the word. So the Bible says, now in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent from God. Realize that this was not an angel or a ministering angel doing his own assignment or doing his own thing. He was mandated by God. Amen. He was mandated by who? By God to deliver a message. Hallelujah. To go to a specific city and to a specific person.
person. God does not make mistakes. Hallelujah. Your being here is not a mistake. Your being here is not an accident. Sometimes people will tell you that you are a mistake. Sometimes people will tell you that you are an accident waiting to happen. But God does not create accidents and mistakes. Hallelujah. Whatever he does, it is for a purpose. It is to fulfill a design. It is to accomplish a vision and a mission. Amen. So the Bible says that in the six-month pregnancy of Elizabeth, an angel Gabriel was sent to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph. Now I want you to take note of this. Amen. I believe many of us have heard these scriptures. We have studied it. We have read it. We have meditated upon it several times. But I want you to open yourself to the Spirit of God. Let the Spirit of God and His power give you illumination to His Word. Let the eyes, your eyes of understanding be enlightened that you will see the light that is in this Word. Amen. So it says that God could have chosen a single person. God could have chosen someone who was not engaged, someone who is not attached, someone who has no relationship, praise God. But he decided to go to someone who has already been betrothed, been engaged, been promised to be married. Amen. And he interfered with their affairs and their life just to give them life. And to make them history makers. Beloved, you are not ordinary. Amen. And God did not create you to be ordinary. Refuse to be average. People will tell you that, I mean, you are okay, just stay here. Don't stress yourself. Don't worry yourself. Don't aspire to do great. Don't think greatness. If you be great, you'll be great. Just, just be normal. Be mediocre. But beloved, I challenge you today. You cannot afford to be mediocre. You cannot afford to be simple. You've got to be determined to excel. You've got to be determined to do well. You've got to be determined to increase. You've got to be determined to prosper. You've got to be determined to be in good health. He could have gone to any other person. But this invitation to make it more complex and difficult for her to reject and to refuse was to a lady that was engaged. A lady that was engaged that had everything working in her favor. This invitation was to destroy her life her relationship, and to cause this man, Joseph, to walk out of her life. Praise God. What are we talking about? We are talking about the power of invitation. That when an invitation, God's invitation comes your way, it is not to take things out of you, but it is to make you better. It is to place you to the, the, the place it is to you to the place he has appointed for you. Hallelujah. Each one of us has an appointed destiny. Amen. The fact that you are not living your destiny now does not mean that it shall not come to pass. You should not settle for mediocre. Hallelujah. You should aspire to do great things. Hallelujah. You should aspire to challenge the, the common things. To challenge the average. The world, this world now does not accept average. Why? Because every organization is looking for their best brain. So not the average. I remember some years ago, I'd gone for parent evening for Daniel. Praise God. And I went for this parent evening. I think when he was in secondary school, early stages there. And he had some few C's. He had some few C's in the scene and we were talking about and the, lecturer, the teacher said that, no, Daniel is doing well. The C's are very good. In fact, he's working very hard. And that's not... I said, no, it's not good. 
C is not good. Don't tell him C is not good. Me too, I'm educated. I know the importance of education. C is not good. If you tell him C is good, how is he going to improve? And I, I just disagree with the teacher. I said, no, he can do better. And lo and behold, he converted all the C's into A's and B's. Something happened and he just did amazing. That he even got an award from his school, the best improved student at the time. Even in the lockdown, he got an award also. Why? Because I challenged the mediocre, I challenged the average. If you have also endorsed with the teacher and said, oh yeah, he's done well, I mean C is very good. Before we know, he has left C to F. You know, because once you settle there, to go up is more difficult, but to go down is very easy because you are coasting. So you cannot settle for the average. You cannot be dealing with low, low invitations. Amen. You've got to challenge yourself to do something great because you are made for greatness. Challenge yourself. Whatever you are doing, don't do it haphazard. If you need to increase your capacity, increase your capacity. If you need to improve yourself, improve yourself. Amen. Add value to yourself. Is somebody with me? Add value to yourself. Because the bottom is too much crowded. Everybody is at the bottom. That's where there's so much fighting. You are stepping on people's toes. You are stepping on people's head. You are stepping on people's stomach everywhere. But you see that at the top, there's no fight. Because few people are at the top. And they work easy. Amen. What am I saying? It's too much crowd at the bottom. So you cannot afford to stay there. And why am I saying this? Because I see an invitation coming your way. And that invitation will challenge the way you think. That invitation can sometimes disturb or interfere with your life. That invitation can sometimes disturb your comfort zone. My beloved, your comfort zone cannot make you great. Many of you, as we enter the new year, you're going to receive an invitation. Amen. Some of the invitation will take you down, which you must avoid. But the invitation that will take you up many a time, it will come to disturb your comfort zone. It will come as an overall. It will come not as hard work. It will come not looking pleasant. It will come dirty. But as you delve into it, you begin to see the gold in that invitation. So God could have chosen to make it simple and easy, could have just chosen a single person. All God needed was a woman because what this invitation is about has nothing to do with a man. So all God needed was a woman. Why did God not use a single woman but went to an engaged person? Why? To challenge them. To cause them to rise above the ordinary. For that which was coming over them was extraordinary. Beloved, the world is not waiting for the ordinary people. If you have anything ordinary, nobody comes to you. The world are looking for extraordinary things. And whatever that you do, if you don't improve yourself, if you don't add value to yourself, you become extinct. Businessman, you must always seek to diversify, do something to challenge your present condition and situation. Because if we stay ordinary, we become extinct. Nobody will desire you. If you do things haphazard, who will promote you? Nobody. 
if you are always going to work late, if you are always doing things like that. No, you won't go that far. But the Bible says, whatsoever that we do, we should do it as unto the Lord. So what does that mean? You give it your best. You give it your best. So that when your invitation comes, you not miss your moment. So the Bible says, the angel betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, a descendant of the house of David, and the virgin name was Mary. And coming to her, the angel said, Greetings, favored one. Why? Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. That was what Kweku led us to pray this morning. The Lord is with you. That is an assurance that that which is about to happen to you cannot be a mistake. Because if he is the way, the truth, and the life, then we can never be led astray. Are you with me? The Lord is with you. So whatever is coming your way, it cannot be a mistake. It cannot be by accident. But it is according to the design, the intent of God. Amen. But she was greatly perplexed at what he said and kept carefully considering what kind of greeting this was. It did not make sense to her. She was confused. Can you imagine a stranger appears in your home and calls you favored? Why am I favored? And say the Lord is with you when you are minding your own business. What has this got to do with me? What does the Lord want from me? I know the Lord is with me, but why are you telling me? So she was confused and did not know what to do. Amen. The Bible says she was greatly perplexed at what he said and kept carefully considering what kind of greeting this was. So she kept thinking about it, musing about it, meditating. What is about to happen? What does he want from me? What is coming to me? Why these greetings? Sometimes things happen to us that we do not understand. That we cannot imagine it happening. Praise God. The same thing happened to Mary. Why? Because she was about to be a history maker. She was about to receive the greatest and the biggest invitation that any person on earth could ever get or receive. And beloved, your level of reach in life is determined by the invitation you honor. Today we are talking about Mary because she honored her invitation. How many invitations have you dishonored? And how have you struggled through that? So she's thinking about it, wondering what is about to happen. Is my life going to be interfered? Is my life going to be put on hold? And will this person wait for me? Will he agree with me? Will he connect with me? Will he come alongside? Will he support me? So she kept thinking about it. The angel said to her, do not be afraid. Of course you'll be afraid. Of course you'll be anxious. Of course you'll be worried. She is not a spiritual being. She is a flesh. Blood flowing through her. She thinks through things. What are my neighborhood going to say? As a matter of fact, what are people going to say about me? Praise God. Do not be afraid. Mary, for you have found favor with God. I think that is a good place to be excited. Amen. To find favor with God, you find favor with men. Amen. By the favor he had with God, even when the man made his mind to dislodge her, by the favor that was on her life, the angel had to 
appear, speak to him. Amen. For Mary to have favor with Joseph. Are you with me? Are you receiving anything for today? So the Bible says, you have found favor with God. Listen carefully. You will conceive. This is the invitation. You will conceive your womb and give birth to a son. This guy wants to destroy my life. How can I give birth to a son without a man that I have been engaged to marry? Amen. How can that happen? They want to disgrace me in this Nazareth town. They want to disgrace me in Galilee. They want to disgrace me in this community. Can you imagine all the things? The embarrassment and the shame. But all the Lord was asking, can I? Your womb is mine. Your whole body is mine. But can I borrow that womb for nine months? To fulfill purpose. To fulfill destiny. To bring my plan of restoration on earth to man. You shall name him Jesus. Can you imagine? She's giving birth to a son. She cannot even name him. Even his name was proclaimed by the angel. But the Isaiah, the prophet, has already declared this already. So can you imagine the news? Amen. He will be great. Eminent. I love that. How many of us want to be eminent? Amen. He will be great and eminent and will be called the son of the most high. Jehovah El Elyon. The most high God. Amen. The son of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob, Israel, forever. For his kingdom, there shall be no end. Mary said to the angel, now I want you to take notice of this. Verse number 34. How will this be? Now Mary is critically analyzing the invitation. So she is critically analyzing. How can it be that me, Mary, will give a birth to a son who will be called the son of God and who will reign in, in Israel, the house of Jacob, Israel forever and his kingdom. And we are struggling even just as we are now. How can he reign over a kingdom that will have no end? It means that my son, my son that I'm going to give birth to is going to be a king? We don't come from a royal family. How can this be? Beloved, when invitation comes, you must analyze it. Many of us got invitation, we just did not think through. We just rushed for it. And our life became a laughing stock. So there is nothing wrong when you get an invitation to decide whether to accept or not to accept. But you are subjecting it to critical thinking and analysis and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you to make your choice. Are you with me? So I said, how can this be? Since I am a virgin, she understood the process. She knew how to conceive. She knew how it was. Since I'm a virgin and have no intimacy with any man. 35. The angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit. This is the how. When God will not come to you and you figure how it will be done. Before God comes to you, he's already planned it out. There's a song that we sing. God will work it out. Amen. God will work it out. I don't know how it's going to happen, but God will work it out. 
I don't know how the bills are going to be paid, but God is working out. It is not by accident if you are in this land, it is not by accident that you are here, but the fact that you cannot find your feet, God will work it out. Amen. Because you are here by his plan. You are here to fulfill purpose and destiny. So the angel said, the how can it be? It's not your thing to do. You either accept or reject. The how can it be is for God to figure it out. Amen. So the angel says, the Holy Spirit will come over you and the power of the Most High. Now, she is going to give birth to a son who will be the Most High. That is not a doing of Mary. It is not a doing of Joseph. But the doing of God. So sometimes God gives us an invitation. God gives us a vision. And we are figuring it in our mind. We don't allow the Holy Spirit to tell us the how. And because it does not make sense to our mind, we abort the invitation. We dishonor the invitation. We reject the invitation. The angel said to her, just to give you peace, your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son to help her to accept the invitation. Why? Because the word came and said that, Mary, you are favored. The Lord is with you. So not to make the mistake of her life. Say your cousin Elizabeth, and Elizabeth has also struggled with conception, is with her child. The one who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For with God, nothing. So your imagination, you're figuring out when you can't find a way. For God, he already knows the way. In fact, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So when you can't see how your life is going to be, how your finances is going to figure out who is going to be there for you, who is going to support you, God knows it all. Amen. That which is impossible to your thoughts. The, the things that when you imagine, you, don't, you can't figure it out. You don't know how it's going to be, beloved. Then Mary said, this is where I want to get to. 38. Then Mary said, behold, I am a servant of the Lord. And that is the most beautiful thing this ministered to me as I studied the word and saw the face of the Lord. Even though she was by herself, she had the power and authority. We've been taught the, the believer's authority, the, the authority of the Christian, of the child of God, of the born again. Even though she had that authority, she could lay that authority down to be used. He, she said, I, I am a servant. Even though I am by myself, I don't owe myself. Amen. Just as the angel is a servant, I am also a servant. So be it unto me. I lay my will down. I don't know whether Joseph is in agreement, but I'm not going to let this invitation pass me by. Who will let this invitation pass by? When you have been informed by an angel that the Lord is with you, that you have been favored, who will want to ignore such an invitation? But he said, me too, I'm a servant. Just like the centurion. He said, I am a man of authority and also under authority. Me too, I'm a servant of the Lord. Just as you are. And if you obeyed the Lord to bring me such a rhema, such a revelation, such a powerful word, may it be done to me according to that word. In other words, I give myself wholly for this invitation. I give myself wholly for this invitation. And the angel left her. 
Mary honored the invitation. And when she honored the invitation, the Bible says the angel left her. May your ministering angel be with you until you accept the right invitation. May they help you to turn down the invitation that will take you down. The invitation that will destroy your life. But may they guide you and lead you because the angel helped Mary. The angel guided her. Said that which is about to come of you shall be great. You are not giving birth to ordinary. And I declare unto you that which the Lord is said to do in your life shall not be like your neighbors. Maybe you look at your neighbors and say they've got far gone ahead of you. But all you need is one word of God to turn your life around, to bring you out to speed, to bring you to fulfillment of your purpose and your destiny. Beloved, all you need to be in life is to be where God has called you to be. It's to do what God has called you to be. There you find joy, you find fulfillment, you find relevance, you find abundance, and you find the fame that you are dying to receive. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, the things that we are believing you for, that we don't know how it will happen. One thing we know and we believe, that you will work it out. Father, if Jacob could cross the river with one staff, and you made him into a multitude, I pray, Almighty God, that which they cannot figure in their life, that which they cannot see an opening door, Father, open those doors to them. Prosper your people with good health. Prosper their finances. Prosper their marriages. Prosper their health. Prosper their businesses. Prosper their career, their education. Let them excel. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and decree, Almighty God, let none of our sons and daughters finish uni and not have a job. By the time they finish, job is already waiting for them. In the name of Jesus, as you did for your son, Father, you will do for all. Elevate your people. Let them find favor with you and favor with God and favor with men. Let their going out be blessed. Give us a mindset of seeking after you. Transform our thoughts that with you nothing shall be impossible. The dreams of our heart bring to glorious manifestation. Let this week be a blessing for your people. Let this week be a blessing for your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Let none go without. For my God shall supply our needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Father, you are the El Shaddai God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you receive something for today, why don't you put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today. Find out more at breadoflifeministries.org.uk